All right, howdy everybody. Welcome back to Top Comics Pressing. In this video, what I want to do is go over some of the kind of devices I've, I've kind of constructed at home for being a little bit more effective with my blue LED whitening. So one of which is this um, piece of uh, cardboard here, and the other of which is this kind of tray. And uh, before I dive into what I use these for and how you can make them yourself, uh, just please go ahead and don't forget to leave a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel wherever that subscribe button is for you right down here. So those subscriptions are genuinely appreciated and they help encourage me to keep putting out videos for you. All right, so this is the first thing I use in my blue LED box, which you won't find probably anywhere else. Uh, it's obviously a uh, pretty cheap construction. So it is a cracked CGC slab. It is an amazing Spider-Man number three 7.0 slab. So I cracked that one. I think that one came back in 8.0. So that was a pretty epic bump for the first appearance of Dr. Octopus when I did that. Uh, of course, I kept the slab to use around the house as a carrying tray. Uh, these are uh, your very common toilet paper rolls center, and this is, I think, from a paper towel roll. Uh, so nothing too crazy there, and then this is just my uh, two-inch Frogger tape, and I've just taped them down. Uh, and the reason I have this set up this way is so that I can take a comic and put it in there and get a really nice arc and loose, uh, and this way I can spray the interior pages and do the whitening without taking the books apart. So if you follow the channel or if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, I really do not like deconstructing books to work on them. I think it's overkill, and I think with the uh, techniques in the stain removal and whitening book, it's unnecessary. And uh, uh, so I just don't do it the overwhelming majority of the time. So on a book like this, you know, it has some clearly off-white pages, and if we wanted to get those to pop to be white, you know, what I would recommend doing is misting this book with 3% hydrogen peroxide. Usually I use 1.5, but the inner wraps respond much, much better to 3%, um, and uh, I found that to be a little better. So I'd mist the whole thing, and then, uh, you know, put this in the light box, and then give it a good old irradiation. And importantly here, you can see on the side, I have this designed to, to really support those loops and keep the staples from flattening out. So what you don't want to do is have this on a flat surface, and as this, you know, moisture expands and contracts, you're going to put a lot of strain on those staples. Um, and so I like them in this little bit of a uh, loop kind of like that. Um, and because, you know, you're going to be misting and because you're not going to want stuff from the tape to transfer to your comic book, what I use is a sheet of SRP paper that I tuck the book on top of just like that. And I'll mist with the SRP paper under there to kind of keep the book off the tape and off the paper towel rolls. So that's one of my little tricks there. You can also use the uh, the kitchen, kitchen parchment paper that I use for ironing books. So I, either of those will work just fine. Um, and then the last little trick is, you know, if you're getting to the end of a book and you've got only a couple wraps here on the back, on the front, you're going to have this little bit here that's going to stick out. And if you don't want to bleach the edges of all those pages more than uh, the, the pages themselves, or like right here, you can see that the co cover is showing out and you want to keep that to be about the same, what I'll do is slide a sheet of printer paper under both of these covers. And that way the peroxide hits that paper instead of the wrap or the cover underneath it. And uh, that way I can get the whitening where I want it to go without whitening, you know, the edges of all these wraps a little bit more. Cause you know, it'll be pretty obvious you did something if you've got off white pages and there's a nice just ghost white border on there. And so you wanna protect that and keep that from happening. And so that's what I use uh, this paper for just to protect the inner sheets. And so this thing now would be ready to get uh, our misting. And then I'd put it in the light box kind of like this. And I like having it on the hard tray because you can just go ahead and pick up that tray and move it on, move it on down. So this page is being a little bit stubborn there at the moment, but because it's on a tray, you can just slide it into place wherever you want it to go. And so I, I like this approach. So this is one of the two tools I've kind of jimmy rigged and built at home. You know, if you have CGC slabs, and you probably have SRP paper if you're pressing, and I'm sure you can come up with paper towel or toilet paper uh, roll tubes. And so pretty low budget, nice little way to support the spine when doing interior pages. So that's uh, tool number one. The second tool here is a little bit bigger, um, and I use this for doing inner covers. Uh, in the stain removal whitening book, it actually discouraged that because we were seeing a lot of pop staples when we were practicing and, and using test books. Uh, but I developed this in the meantime off of a design somebody else posted on the Captain Mike board. And, uh, you know, I think it works pretty well. So I can share that with you. This um, cardboard, 
is ironically enough from the CGC box lid. So anybody who's gotten slab boxes back might recognize the honeycomb. So this is just straight up out of a out of a CGC box. Doesn't have to be this cardboard. I like this just because it's pretty thick and pretty sturdy. And I have uh, a backer here kind of taped on to, to give it a 90 degree bend. And then I've got a couple of these pieces sitting on here um, just to help stabilize the, the magazine backer board. And this is just two magazine backer boards kind of taped into place and they're taped together. So if I pull that out, you can see that there's some tape on the back of them. I just lined them up, taped them together and then kind of taped them. And this generates kind of a nice natural arc here. So if you just follow that, you can see it's kind of a smooth arc. Um, again, you're gonna wanna protect the book from the tape and from those magazine backer boards. Uh, backer boards can stick sometimes to a book. And so I use, the, this is the kitchen parchment uh, that I use for ironing. So it's just my nonstick up and up parchment paper. And uh, I use this both for my interior blue LED misting and overlays. So let's say I have a comic book here and I wanna treat the interior cover. Um, what I'll do is get that comic book in place. Um, I might hold that end on up there. Now, again, if you don't wanna, mess with the inner wraps. You don't want a ghost white inner wrap um, while you're doing a uh, exterior cover, right? So if the inner wrap is bright white and the first page is cream, you know, it's going to be pretty obvious somebody messed with it. So you don't want to do that. So what I do instead is I'll open the sun up and I'll take a sheet of paper here and I'll slide it right under the front cover and that way I'll be protecting that splash page. And I use chip clips here to just gently chip clip that paper over the cover. Here's another one. Um, these, by the way, I've carefully selected because they have kind of a soft, squishy rubber on the inside um, and they don't have teeth. So a lot of these chip clips have kind of jagged teeth and I wouldn't recommend that. These have a fairly loose spring, so it's not applying a lot of pressure and it's spreading that pressure over a fairly large area here. And I just kind of pop that on there so that my comic book can be nice and secure. And that holds it in place without causing any damage. And then, you know, it opens up the cover here. And I just kind of let it dangle. Obviously, if you yank it or pull it, you're going to be causing a lot of strain to that staple. But usually if I get a nice wet overlay, I can just slide that right over. And the overlay, while it's wet, tends to stick quite nicely to the comic book. And uh, then it would be ready for the blue LED treatment uh, with the overlay on top. Or alternatively, you can mist here. If you mist, when you come back, this edge of the paper is going to be curled up and you're going to need to change that out every time. If you do the overlay, usually I can do two to three interior your treatments without needing to mess with the comic book uh, in any way and so you, you know you can see it's it's pretty secure there and that comic book cover is just going to kind of have a nice natural uh, fall down uh, and I found that this works pretty well without causing too much damage to the staples. I have tried to put some objects under here to help support that um, and you can use a paper towel roll if you'd like. Uh, I haven't found anything that I think is better than just leaving it kind of unprotected. Usually if the overlay has some moisture it'll kind of gently just fall under the weight of itself. Uh, if you're doing older Silver Age books that have natural tanning or that have brittle connections you want to be really careful to watch where those staples are because uh, it is uh, possible to pop the staples doing this on the interior. But other than that, this is the kind of the second just kind of jimmy rigged device I have here. You can see it's just cardboard and, and painter tape with a magazine backer board. And this has worked out really well to be able to let me treat interior covers without having to worry about you know, damaging them too much or, or having any other issues. And so I just wanted to share these two tools, um, both of which you can totally do uh, all on your own. You know, I mean, it doesn't really take rocket science and it doesn't really take anything, um, you know, too dramatic. But I think if you construct these, uh, I found both of them to be quite useful. This, by the way, is too big to fit in the boxes that a lot of other people are selling. And so it's one of the reasons why I think you're better off with your own kind of build it yourself uh, blue LED light box so that you can kind of get the full use out of doing these interiors uh, by putting these sorts of devices on the inside to be able to let you expose that. It's also uh, in that video I showed that you know sometimes I want to turn my rail this way and it's be this is why because if I have that rail going this way and I've got my lights you know kind of left to right I'm not going to be getting a good split but I'll take that rail and turn it and then I'll have one bulb over the kind of top third and the other bulb over the second third and I'll be able to get a really nice even smooth treatment on that interior cover and that overall uh, is quite nice.
So with that, hopefully you got some use out of this. I'll make one more plea here for you to click that subscribe button. Uh, please like the video here while you got a second. Feel free to share it with your friend. And as always, feel free to reach out if you have any questions on this or if you want some pictures. Uh, I've posted them to the Captain Mike Facebook group a couple of times, and I definitely encourage you to go check out both the Captain Mike Facebook group, but also the Captain Mike YouTube channel to be able to see some of the other content on stain removal and whitening. And uh, so take care, fans, and uh, stay tuned for some more videos here that I'll be putting out in the future. So thank you.